everyone and welcome to this morning's yoga practice. Today in our class we will be doing a little bit of standing balancing poses. So for today if you do have a block at home, um, we will be using it really just for hand placements in our balancing poses. If you don't have a block at home feel free to use a nice solid heavy book um, or if you've been doing a little bit of DIY out in the backyard and you have a couple of spare pieces of wood lying around go ahead and grab those as well it's really just to give your hands that tiny little bit of extra height so with that in mind we're going to get started and we're going to begin this morning in our child's pose so bringing the knees nice and wide big toes touching we're going to sink the hips all the way down onto the heels and then slowly bow the upper body all the way down and forward <clears throat> So here, yeah, just give your hips a little bit of a wriggle, especially if you're feeling quite tight through the knees and the hip flexors this morning. Maybe just a gentle sway from side to side. And allow the elbows and the forearms to come resting all the way down on your mat as well here in your child's pose. This will just allow your head and neck to relax so that you can place the forehead on the floor. Now, if your forehead is quite far away from the floor or that's too much of a strain to place the head all the way down, feel free to grab your block or your piece of wood and just place it underneath the forehead to give yourselves a little bit of extra height. And then really nice and gently start to bring your awareness to your breath and to your lungs. Start to focus on those nice deep inhales and those long exhales. Looking for a beautiful rhythmic breath here in your child's pose. Going for another five nice deep breaths here before we begin to move a little bit more. After that fifth breath, gently slide the hands underneath the shoulders to lift the upper body all the way up and come into your tabletop position. <clears throat> so bringing the knees underneath the hips, wrists, elbows and shoulders in a nice long line, we're going to set up for some rounds of our cat and cow. So on your inhale, roll the shoulders, drop the belly and send the gaze up. And as you exhale, we're arching through the upper back and into those shoulder blades, dropping the chin to the chest. Inhale to roll the shoulders, drop the belly, lift up. And exhale to arch into your cat. Just keep on going here with the rhythm of your own breath. Nice big inhales to your cow. 
nice long exhales to your cat. We'll go for five more here. Just taking your time. We're going as fast or as slow as you'd like there. Cat and cow is just a really nice way to slowly wake up the spine first thing in the morning. And just to get a few of those fluids pumping around the body. And one more cow. And one more cat. So coming back to your neutral tabletop from here, we're going to do a little bit of work into the glutes and the hamstrings. So keeping both hands down on the floor, we're going to raise that right knee off the floor and flex the foot towards the glutes. So from here, we're just going to be doing some nice little pulses with this back knee. So inhale to lift it a little bit higher. Exhale to drop it to midway. Inhale to lift. Exhale to drop. So keep on going here with your breath. You'll start to feel a nice little bit of heat building up in that back quad on that right side. And we're going to go for 10 more. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, right knee coming all the way back down to the floor. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So this time grounding down through the right knee in both hands, lifting that left knee off the floor. So flexing the toes and the foot, sorry, towards the bum. We're going to inhale to lift that left knee a little bit higher and then drop it to about mid height. Inhale to lift and then drop it down. So this is where we create those nice little pulses. And we're going to go for 10 more on this side. So for 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. One, beautiful work, bringing that left knee all the way back down to the floor. So back into our tabletop, we're going to start to wake up the shoulders a little bit here. Left hand is going to come to the middle of the mat, inhale the right arm all the way up. And as you exhale, we're going to dive that right arm all the way down and under the left, bringing the right shoulder to the floor and the right ear to the floor, ground right through the needle. The left hand here can rest in front of that right elbow. Or if you'd like a little bit more of an extension, left hand can come out towards the top of the mat. So keeping our hips over our knees here, we're going to stay for four nice big breaths. To come out of our thread the needle that left hand comes back in front of the right and we're going to inhale all the way back up give the shoulders a wee wriggle and then switching sides right hand to the middle of the mat inhale left arm up and exhale to dive the left arm all the way down under left shoulder to the floor left ear to the floor if you are not down on the floor with your head or your shoulder again Grab your block and place it underneath the head for a little bit of extra height. If you're on the ground and you're quite comfortable with that, you can extend that right hand all the way out. Four nice big breaths on this side. that 
right hand is going to come back towards that left elbow to inhale to push yourselves all the way back up. Again, give the shoulders a little wriggle. And then we're going to come in to build up a little bit of strength and flexibility in the shoulders. So from here, bringing the forearms down to the floor. We want to have the elbows about the distance that if you wrapped your hands around each of your upper arms, you could wrap your fingers around the triceps. <clears throat> from here, palms flat to the mat. We're going to curl the toes under, look forward, and then lift the hips. So we're coming into our dolphin. If the hamstrings are really tight here, bend those knees. As you come into your dolphin, we're going to start to melt the heart space towards the thighs. And by this point, you're looking directly down at your mat and breathing. It's a really beautiful shoulder opener, shoulder stretch. Getting all the way into those lats, into the rhomboids, and up into the rotator cuff and the deltoids. So we're going to stay here for five nice big breaths. So keep lifting those sitting bones or those hips to the ceiling and keep mounting that heart towards the thighs. from here we're going to slowly start to walk those feet back a little bit longer and then on your next inhale roll the shoulders over the elbows and come into your forearm plank so here drawing the heels all the way back squeezing through all the way through the legs so right up into the quads the hamstrings and the glutes and starting to draw the belly button towards the spine we're going to stay here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Knees come down to the floor and we're going to lower all the way down with the belly, keeping those elbows underneath the shoulders. We're going to lift up through the heart, roll the shoulder blades back. Sphinx pose. So coming into a really gentle little back bend here, lifting up through the crown, continuing to roll those shoulders back. Taking another nice big inhale, and then exhale. We're going to come all the way down and just turn the right ear to the floor. Take both arms alongside the body, just for a big inhale. And a long exhale. And then we're going to take both hands underneath the shoulders. Nose to the mat. Inhale to lift up. Cobra. So go gently here. If your sphinx is better than your cobra this morning, stay with your sphinx. Continue to roll the shoulders back. Pushing the tops of the feet down. And gazes forward. Take another nice big inhale. And then exhale to come down. This time, arms alongside the body, left ear to the floor, just for a moment, just for a breath. And then this time, chin is going to come to the floor. We're going to flip those palms down. We're going to start to push down with the feet and push down with the hands. And then on your inhale, start to lift the upper body up. So keep pushing down with the hands, keep pushing down with the feet. Another nice big in breath. And exhale to come down. We're going to go the same kind of thing with the lower part of the body for this next bit. So keep the chin to the floor, keep the hands pushing down into the floor. But this time on your inhale, you're going to lift the feet, the shins, and the thighs off the floor. Keep pushing down with the upper body. Keep that chin glued to your mat. 
and it's our release. So for this last one here, we are coming into our lotus pose. So we are lifting everything up. So on your inhale, lifting the upper body, the shoulders, the elbows and hands, lower body, lifting the feet, the shins and the thighs. Continue to look forward here for another two nice big breaths. Roll those shoulders towards each other in the thoracic part of the back. And exhale to release. Hands come underneath the shoulders. Curl the toes, push through the knee. Come all the way up and back into an extended child's pose. So this time we're going to keep those elbows and forearms up. Sinking the hips back to those heels, or close towards the heels. Two big breaths here. And then we're going to come into a downward facing dog. So planting the hands into the mat, coming forward, curl those toes, lead with the hips, downward facing dog. So go ahead and give your legs a little walk out here. So walking your dog. Just releasing through the low back, the backs of the legs, even the shoulders. And then finding your neutral down dog, we're going to stay here for three nice big breaths. So keep externally rotating those shoulders outwards. Keep a micro bend in the knees if the hamstrings are tight. And your gaze is basically directly to your mat. We're not trying to crank the head here and look towards the feet. We want to keep the head in line with the neck and the spine. From here, we're going to look towards the top of the mat or to the hands and slowly walk those feet up behind the hands, coming into a ragdoll. So letting the upper body hang forward. Again, micro bend the knees if the hammies are tight. Grab hold of opposite elbows and just hang it out. So I automatically want to come into a little bit of movement here in my ragdoll. Feel free to do the same. If you're feeling more of that just static hang, go for it. So make sure the head and the neck are completely relaxed. Shake the head out, no. Nod the head out, yes. And then just let gravity take over. Three more nice big inhales and long exhales here. I'm going to release the hands down to the floor and come on your inhale to a halfway lift. So nice flat back, crown of the head drawing forward. Exhale to fold forward. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. One more. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. On your next inhale, sweep the arms all the way up and overhead. And exhale, hands to heart center. Coming into Samastiti. So from here we're going to come into a couple of rounds of our sun salutations just to really warm the body up and get the spine quite mobile before we start to warm up the lower body and then get into our flow. So on your inhale, arms come all the way up. Exhale to fold through the midline of the body. Halfway lift to fill up. Hands to the floor, this time step back to high plank. So no more forearm plank. For the first one, you might like to drop the knees. So knees come down, elbows stay tight to the sides of the body. Exhale all the way down. Inhale to lift into a cobra. And exhale, curling the toes, pushing the neck through the knees. Downward facing dog. 
Looking towards the top of your mat, inhale to step both feet up. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to rise and come up. And exhale, we're going to continue to flow through. All the way down. Halfway lift. Hands to the floor, high plank. Your choice, knees to the floor or not. On your exhale, you're coming down. Inhale to lift, this time cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Looking forward, inhale to step both feet up. Halfway lift. Exhale to fold. And inhale to rise all the way up. Exhale to fold. We have two more rounds here. Halfway lift to fill. Hands to the floor. Stepping it back. Choosing how you come down here. Exhale as you lower. Either all the way down or to chaturanga. Inhale to lift the heart. Cobra or up dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Looking forward. Step or jump to the top of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale, empty. Inhale to rise all the way up. Last round. Exhale to fold forward. Halfway lift. Hands to the floor. Take it back and down. Exhale as you lower. Inhale as you lift. Cobra or up dog. And exhale. Downward facing dog. Looking forward, step or hop to the top of the mat, halfway lift, empty out, and inhale to rise all the way up, hands to prayer. Give yourselves two nice big breaths here in your samasthiti. hands alongside your body. Take your feet to the widest edges of your mat and we're going to set up for our malasana or our deep yogi squat. So we're coming all the way down with the hips. Use the hands out in front to lower yourselves all the way down. If you get close to the floor and you're all the way up on the balls of your feet, grab your block and place it at whichever height you need underneath the sitting bones. Just to give yourselves a little bit of extra height here. As you do that, you want to take the upper arms to the insides of the knee creases and the hands into prayer at the heart center. If you're all the way down, both with flat feet, same thing with the upper arms. Triceps are going to snuggle the inside of those knees. Hands in prayer. As you inhale and lengthen up through the spine, those hands are going to come to about that sternum height. So here we're really using the upper part of the body to guide those knees in line with the middle toes. Keep lifting up through the crown of the head. And we're going to stay here for five nice, deep and juicy breaths. Because Malasana is one of those poses I highly recommend that you do every single day. And then from here, we're just going to take the hands to the floor. We're going to lift the hips enough that we can slowly start to walk back into downward facing dog. From here, on your next inhale, we're going to raise the right knee all the way up. Look towards the hands, step your right foot forward. Left knee is going to come all the way down to the floor. From here, 
we're going to inhale hands to this front thigh. So you might notice as soon as you come up that you're dropping quite low into your hips and pelvis with a bit of gravity. That's actually okay, that's where we're going to be working to. But the main thing to remember here is that the right knee is directly above this right ankle. We really don't want to be overextending here and coming too far forward with that knee. So it may be that you just need to wriggle the back leg back a little bit. So from here we're going to do a couple of little low lunge pumps before coming into a low lunge twist. So on your inhale, lift up through the hips and pelvis and almost come to half straight in that front leg and then exhale to sink down. Inhale to come up and exhale to sink. As you do this and continue to move, just notice what's happening with the hands. We really just want them on the thigh to hang out. We don't want to be pushing down, but are really just resting there. So if you find it a little bit easier to move your hands to your hips, go for it. Sometimes that just stops us from trying to force that front knee down. The hands can just hang out. The upper body is relatively relaxed here. Now go for five more pumps, just in your own time. Inhale to lift, exhale to sink down. So five. Four. Three. Two. And one. And as you sink down into this last low lunge, we're going to take the left hand down to the floor, the right hand to the right knee. Take a nice big inhale to lengthen forward. And as you exhale, you're going to come onto the edge of that right foot and just start to wing that right knee open as you turn the heart towards the right side. So we're coming into our low lunge twist or our dragon twist. Three nice juicy breaths here. Then using that right hand, guide that right knee back to centre. Hands either side of that right foot. Curl the back toes under. Step back. Downward facing dog. You might notice here that one leg already feels a little bit longer than the other. My left leg certainly does. And that's the side we're going to go into right now. So on your next inhale, left leg all the way up. Look towards the hand, step the left foot forward. Right knee comes all the way down. From here, inhaling those hands back onto that front knee. So hands can stay on the front knee if they're relaxed and just resting. Otherwise, hands to the hips. Again, check in with the front knee. Left knee directly over left ankle. Then on your inhale, we're going to lift all the way up and back with the hips and pelvis. And exhale, sinking forward. Inhale to come up, exhale to come down. Just moving with your breath here. Sinking on those exhales and lifting on those inhales. Notice what's going on in your hip flexors, especially on that right side. Check in with the knee. This is really our warm up for our lower body before we come into a more vigorous flow. So we'll go for two more here. Exhaling to come down. Nice work. And from here on that nice last one, we're coming into that low lunge. This time the right hand is going to come down to the floor. That left hand is going to stay on the left thigh. Take a nice big inhale to lengthen forward. And as you exhale, coming onto the edge of that left foot, winging that left knee open and turning the chest and the heart space towards the left. So here your gaze can be directly out to the left or you can even look back to where that left elbow is pointing. 
three nice juicy breaths here. Nice work. We're losing that left hand to draw the left knee back in. This time, hands on the side of that left foot. We're going to curl the right toes under, lift the back knee, look forward, and step the right foot up. Hang it forward in your forward fold. So for this next little bit, make sure that you've got your block towards the top of the right side of your mat to begin with. It will switch sides, but we'll start here on the right. And then from here, we're going to inhale to a halfway lift. Nice flat back. Exhale to pop. Inhale to chair pose. So sink those hips down, weight into the heels, arms coming up. We're holding here for three nice big breaths. So sink down a little bit more with those hips. Keep the toes nice and light. Two more. Taking a nice big inhale. Exhale to pop. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back. Hands to the floor, step back, high plank. Little wee vinyasa here. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift the heart, cobra or up dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. So we're setting up for our flow on the right and left sides, inhaling the right leg all the way up. Look towards the hand, step the right foot forward. Inhaling, crescent lunge. Exhaling, warrior two. So we're going to move through a couple of movements on both sides in slight variations here in our kind of our warrior poses, but also standing dancing. So from here, flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. Inhale to come all the way back up, straighten out that front leg, reach all the way forward. Triangle. This is where you might want to have that front block underneath that right hand. So we're going to do that two more times. So on your inhale, I want you to lift all the way up, bend through the front knee, flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. Then inhale to come back up. Straighten the front leg, reach all the way forward, triangle. So noticing when you come into your triangle that you're trying to stack that left hip on top of the right. And we've got both legs nice and straight. Two more here. So inhaling to lift, bend the front knee, flip the front palm, flow into your reverse warrior. Inhale to come up, straighten reach, triangle. Last one here. Inhale to come up. Bend into warrior two. Flip the front palm. Reverse your warrior. Nice work. Inhale to lift. Straighten that front leg. Reach all the way forward. Triangle. So we're nice and warmed up here through the back of that right leg. It's going to be our standing right leg. So if you have your block where it is in your triangle, just chuck it to the top of the right foot. As you inhale to come up into warrior two, bending that front knee, we're going to spin around. Sorry, no, we're not going to spin around. We're coming into our half moon or standing balancing pose. So we're going to flow through this side a little bit as well. So take the left hand to the left hip. We're going to take the right hand down to either your block, or if you don't want to use your block, we're coming down to the outside of that right foot. From here, we're going to come into our half moon. So bending through that front leg, we want to lift, step, and come up into our half moon. And I feel like I might be a little bit off the camera here. 
But as we drop back, we're bending through that front knee, coming back to warrior two. So we're going to do that a couple of times, coming from our warrior two, right hand down to that block or the top of your mat as you inhale to pop, all the way up, half bend. So we're going to go slowly here for another two rounds. Left hand to the hip as you bend the front knee, step back, warrior two. So this is going to take us a little bit outside the box to our normal, what we're used to. But it's a nice way to change it up and increase the strength in that front knee. Left hand to left hip, right hand down, looking forward, inhale to step up. Left arm up. So when I say look forward, we're kind of looking to the left side but out from the top of the left side of the mat. Left hand to the hip, bending back, warrior two. Last one here. So, left hand to the hip, right hand down to the floor or your block, popping on that left side, left arm up, half moon. You might be feeling pretty warm in that right leg. Left hand to the hip, bend the front knee, Warrior two. From here, we're going to spin on that back heel to our crescent lunge. So just to give that front leg a nice little bit of a stretch, we're going to straighten out the front leg, take the hands towards the hips, inhale to lengthen, and exhale to hinge forward. So this next part is going to be more about balancing Pose, your poses, inhale to come back up, bend through the front knee, we're going to keep the hands on the hips, look forward and then on your next inhale, this left knee is going to come all the way up to the chest. So inhale, whoops, to step up. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit wobbly this morning, part of it's because my legs are tired, I'm not going to lie. But also because I'm on quite a thick carpet. So from here, we're going to shoot that left foot all the way back. Arms come alongside the body for our aeroplane or our warrior three. And then hands back to the hips. Inhaling that left knee all the way back up. We're going to do that one more time. Exhale to kick back. Now I know that that right foot might be a little bit sore, might be a little bit tender. It is working very hard. From our warrior three, hands come to the floor. Left foot steps back in a low lunge. Right foot steps back, downward facing dog. So give the legs a walk out here. Shake out that right foot. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side and with that in mind I'm going to spin around so that you can see me on this side as well. So this time the block is going to come to the left side of your mat and we're going to inhale the left leg all the way up. Look towards the hand, step the left foot forward, inhaling crescent lunge. Exhaling warrior two. So coming into our first nice little flow, we're going to flip the front palm, reverse our warrior here on the left side. And as we inhale to come all the way up, we're straightening that front leg, reaching forward, trikonasana or triangle. If you'd like to use your block here under that left hand, go for it. On the next inhale, we're lifting the upper body, Bending through the front knee, flipping, and reverse. Inhale to lift. Straightening, reaching forward, tilting the other body. Trying to stack that right hip on top of the left. Inhale to come up. Bend, flip, and reverse. Inhale to lift, straighten the front leg, 
Trikonasana. So we've got one more after this. Inhale, lift. Bend the front knee. Flip and reverse. Inhale, lift. Straighten the front leg. Reach all the way forward. Triangle. So stay here in your triangle for another two nice big breaths. And just really notice that right hip stacking on top of the left. And that right shoulder on top of the left shoulder. So this is going to set us up for our nice next little bit, sorry. Our half moon pops. So a lot of the times we would do this a little bit faster in class. But I just want to break this down for you so that you can see what it's about to move a little bit more even through just a couple of poses. So, from here, chuck the block back down to the mat, inhale to come up, bend through that front knee, and from here, we're gonna take that left hand down to your block, or down to the floor. Right hand on the right hip, looking out towards the top of that right side of your mat, and popping, wow, <laughs> really wobbly on my left side. So, coming into our half moon on the left. So here, that's where that stacking motion wants to come from, with that right hip on top of the left. Gently bending the front knee, stepping back, warrior two. So let's see on the next three rounds whether or not I become a little bit more whew, stable on the left side. So left hand comes all the way back down to the floor of the block. Right hand, right hip, take a nice big inhale and popping up. Right hand all the way up. So if you do wibble, wobble and fall out, give yourselves a nice big smile, maybe a wee giggle, bend that front knee, step back, warrior two. Yoga is fun. <laughs> Yoga is not meant to be serious. It's certainly not meant to be boring. We're going to come back with that left hand down to the floor, right hand to right hip, and pop forward. You may already notice, like I am, that already here in our round three, I'm feeling a little bit more stable. I'm feeling a little bit more confident on this side. And that's what it's all about. We just want to take that confidence that we start to gain. Right hand, right hip, bend the front knee, step back, warrior two. Last one on this side. Again, left hand all the way down, right hand, right hip, pop, and lift, keeping that back foot nice and flexed. Stacking that right hip on top of the left, nice big smiles. And right hand to right hip, bend that front knee, step back, warrior two. From here, we're spinning on that back foot. Crescent lunge. From our crescent lunge, we're gonna be stepping forward and coming into that balancing on that left foot. So begin by taking the hands to the hips. Nice big inhale, look forward, step the right knee all the way up to the chest. So here, begin by flexing those right toes. Take a nice big inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna kick all the way back. Airplane. So we're gonna do that one more time. Inhaling the right knee all the way up. When you're ready, exhaling to kick back. And then from here, hands come down to the floor. Right foot comes down, left foot comes wider on your mat. We're going to set up for our Malasana round two. So, sinking the hips all the way back down, grabbing for your block. If you'd like it here underneath your hips or your sitting bones, otherwise, staying with your heels all the way back down, triceps to the insides of those knees, hands to prayer, inhale to lengthen as you gently exhale and guide those knees to those middle toes. So we're going to come into a Malasana Crow from here. So it's another balancing pose 
It's just not one of our standing leg poses, not yet. Take the hands down to the floor. Keep those upper arms nice and snuggled into those knee creases. And then lift the heels all the way up so that we're coming onto the balls of our feet. Look towards the top of your mat and start to lean forward. So keep looking forward and leaning forward. You might get to a point where one foot becomes quite light, two feet become quite light, and you want to squeeze the core and start drawing the toes together. When you're ready, you can pop back down. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds here to have a go at doing your Malasana Crow, maybe two or three times. It's really important to remember in this crow pose that it's actually more about balance than it is about strength. There is strength involved, but we're using the upper body to balance the lower body on it like a little shelf. So go ahead and give it another couple of goes. Remember to keep looking forward, leaning forward, and then popping the toes if they're there for you. And then from our Malasana Crow, once you've had a couple of goes at doing that, we're going to lift the hips, bring the feet to hip width distance, and fold forward. So again, relax the shoulders, relax the hands. You might like to go for a little sway again. Check in with the feet. Notice how sticky those soles of the feet are to the mat. Again, shake the head out no, nod the head out yes. And then release the hands. And on your next inhale, we're going to slowly roll up the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. If you get halfway and you need to exhale, just pause. Exhale. And inhale to continue rolling. So we have a couple of standing balancing poses here. We are going to start with the left foot down on the mat. <clears throat> and for the first one, I am going to stand facing for you. The first one is tree pose. So we want to keep the left foot nice and sticky and engaged on the floor. We're going to take the right foot and you have a couple of options here with your tree legs. You can take the right heel just above that left ankle. You can take the right sole of the foot to the right shin, or you can take the sole of that right foot all the way up to the inner thigh on the left leg. Important here if you're coming up high to definitely be above the knee, but also to push back with that thigh. So we want to have that thigh pushing into the sole of the foot. Wherever your tree legs are is perfect. Start with your hands on the hips. Then when you're ready, hands come to prayer. And you can either stay here with your hands in prayer or grow your tree. So arms coming all the way up to the ceiling. We're going to stay here for another two nice deep breaths. And the hands come back to prayer as you gently exhale and slide that right foot down. Shake out the left leg. So we're going to jump straight on into the other side. Again, sticking down and really engaging that right foot. Your tree legs might be the same on the side, they might be different. So just be a bit mindful with how you're feeling this morning. Left heel above right ankle. Sole of the foot to the shin. Ooh, going a little bit on the side. Or sole of the left foot all the way up into that top thigh. Remember, push the thigh into the foot. Start with your hands on the hips. Hands can come into prayer. Staying here or growing your tree. So it really does help to find a spot in front of you, maybe on the wall or the floor, that you can set your focus or set your gaze. Two nice big breaths on this side. And then hands come into prayer. 
gently lower the hands and slide that left foot down. Go ahead and shake out the right foot. So we have one more standing balancing pose here. Again, we'll come back to the left side. This one here is a cross between our Ukitasana or chair pose and our standing balancing pose. It's also a little bit of a hip opener. So we're gonna start by taking the hands to the hips again, bending through that left side as you pick up the right foot at ankle and cross it over that left knee. So you're creating almost a figure of four shape with this right side. Your hands can stay on your hips here, or if you'd like to stretch through that right hip that little bit more, left hand comes onto that right flex foot, right hand to the right knee. So you're gonna inhale, lengthen up through the spine, but exhale and sink. So you're starting to get a really nice, slow stretch happening in that right hip. Gaze can be directly down on the floor. Let's stay here for another two nice big breaths. Very gently on your next inhale, you're straightening through the left leg and unraveling that right foot. Shake out the left foot. Same thing, other side. Hands to the hips, grounding down with that right foot. We're going to slowly start to bend through the right side enough that you can start to cross the left ankle over top of that right thigh. So again, the hands can start on the hips, otherwise left hand to the left knee, right hand to the left foot. So flex the toes towards the left knee, gives you a little bit more stability, and sink on down on that exhale. Two more nice big breaths. Then on your next inhale, gently straighten the right leg, unravel the left, shake out that right foot. And then from here, coming back to your Tadasana stance, we're going to inhale the arms all out. And exhale to fold forward. Halfway lift to fill up. Hands to the floor, step back, high plank. Our last little vinyasa here. So exhale to low plank. Inhale to cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. From here, look towards that right wrist and we're going to sweep that right knee arm behind the right wrist, setting up for our half pigeon. So, stretching that left leg all the way out behind you. Now, if you know that half pigeon is not okay for you in that front knee, if you've had any MCL, PCL, ACL, any knee issues at all, I would prefer, if you could, to come onto your backs. <clears throat> so if you lie on your back, you're just doing that same figure of four motion that we've just done. Maybe keeping the foot on the floor. Or maybe going for a nice wee grip around that front thigh. That's if you've just got that tightness happening in that right knee. Something to really be mindful of and look after with the knees. Otherwise, here in your half pigeon, we want to square the hips forward. If you feel like you're going to collapse a little bit down to the right, Please use your block underneath the right hip. If you feel like you're doing what I sometimes do and go down to my left, please go under that left thigh. If you've got more than one block, feel free to prop yourself up under both sides. Otherwise, take the hands alongside the body. Take a nice big inhale to lengthen up and then exhale to sink down. Then we're going to slowly forward, fold sorry, the upper body forward. And here, if you haven't used your blocks or if you have bolsters or other props or pillows at home, it is often quite nice to rest them underneath your chest so that you can just drop the upper body forward. Otherwise, if you're there, you might like to come all the way down to the floor with the forehead, relaxing those arms and those elbows. Otherwise, just finding the most comfortable position for your upper body to rest in. 
And we're going to stay here in our half pigeon for about 60 seconds or 10 nice big yoga breaths. So allow your body to melt through the hip area and the pelvis. Let go of any tension through the shoulders and the upper arms. Just allow the gravity to kind of weight you down here with your torso, shoulders and forehead. Really set your focus and attention on your inhales and your exhales. And gently just taking each hand down your each shoulder to lift the upper body cool the left toes under and step gently back into downward facing dog give that right leg a little bit of a walk out so essentially we're going to jump straight on into the other side so looking towards that left wrist let's sleep sweep the left knee down setting up for half pigeon on the other side if you've been doing your half pigeon on your back, just switch your legs over. Again, wriggle the blocks to where you would like them to keep those hips nice and square. Hands come alongside the body. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to sink down. And then coming all the way forward with the other body. So you might be a little bit different on this side. You might not want your block under your forehead. You might be relaxed all the way down. If you're a little bit of a runner, like I am, you need a little bit of support underneath the upper body. So find this position where you can relax the head, the neck and the shoulders, where the torso can just fold quite naturally and where you can really start to feel that slow stretch happening all the way through the left hip and the left foot. So we will spend the same amount of time on the left side as we did the right side. It's really so we don't Finish our practice feeling wonky at all. So come back to your breath. Those nice deep inhales and long exhales.
nice and slowly, hands come underneath each shoulder to lift the upper body. We're going to come out of this side just that little bit differently. So if you've got any blocks underneath you, just move them out of the way. From here, curl the right toes under to lift the back knee and then just allow yourselves to collapse all the way down to the left foot. I'm um, a left hip, sorry, not left foot. And bring both legs all the way out in front. So we go ahead and give your legs a little bit of a shake out. If you've been on your back, you're just sitting yourselves upright. And then from here, leaving the left leg nice and outstretched, take the right foot and cross it over there. Left leg. Placing the foot about midway down your calf. From here, right hand is going to come directly behind the spine. As you inhale, you're lifting up through the spine and lengthening. Left arm comes all the way up. And as you exhale, we're going to spin towards the right. Using the right hand as an anchor. Left arm as a little bit of a block. So coming here into our Lord of the Fish. Your gaze is going to be directly out towards the right or just around to that right shoulder. Three nice big breaths here. Another big inhale to lengthen and exhale to unravel. Switching sides, right leg comes out, left foot over that right shin, left hand behind the spine, inhale the right arm up, and exhale as you twist to the left. And three nice big breaths on this side. Maybe another big inhale and then exhaling to unravel. This time we're coming into a seated forward fold. So both legs are coming all the way out. You might want to move the glutes off your sitting bones. We want those sitting bones nice and grounded. Hands come to the hips. On your in inhale, sorry, we're lengthening all the way out. And on your exhale, we're going to start hinging forward from the hips. So what we want to try and avoid here is this curling through the back. We really want to take the stretch from all the way here in those hip flexors. So lengthening up on those inhales, exhale, you're coming forward. And you might be holding onto your shins, you might be holding your ankles, you might even be at your feet. Wherever you are with your hand grip, I want you to keep rolling the shoulders back and leaning through the heart space. So we're trying to keep the spine relatively straight here. Every inhale, keep lengthening, and every exhale, hinging forward. Let's go for three more nice big breaths. And inhaling to come all the way back up. Take the hands alongside the hips. Bend the knees towards the ceiling and lower yourselves all the way down onto your backs. Starting to slow the body right down. Take the feet to the widest edges of your mat, hands to the belly. Just want you to start to sway those knees from side to side. Nice and slowly, just releasing through the glutes. The hips, the sacrum. Even a little bit of the lumbar spine here. Start to relax your breath. Just allow the lungs to take over here. Going for three more swishes on each side. A 
and then drawing the knees into the chest go ahead and give yourselves a nice big squeeze Feel free to take any last minute poses if you wish. I'm going to take a happy baby. This is just before our Shavasana. Maybe a supine twist is there for you. Maybe you just want to continue squeezing those knees. Maybe you're already in Shavasana and that is all good as well. Wherever you are from here, Release the legs coming all the way down to the floor. Arms come alongside the body, palms facing up. Wriggle through the shoulders, wriggle through the hips. Let the feet completely relax. Close the eyes so the muscles through the jaw and the face can drop away or release any tension. Really give yourselves the space and the time for your Shavasana. Really slowly start to bring a little bit of movement back into your fingers and your toes. When you're ready, interlace the hands, take them all the way up and overhead. Give yourselves a nice big full length stretch. And then releasing the hands, you can roll to your right or your left side. Just stay here for a moment. And then using the top arm, slowly push yourselves all the way up to a comfortable seated position. The hands can come to resting on your thighs, your knees, or even into prayer at the heart center. So you're grinding down through those sitting bones, lengthening up through the spine and out through the crown of the head. Give yourselves a few moments here to set an intention for your day and for the rest of your week. Thank you all very much for your practice today. I hope you enjoyed my bubble wobbles on the left side. Namaste.